Good evening, and welcome to St. Sebastian's. Please rise and join in singing our opening hymn, number 567, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, number 567. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you and welcome. We gather on this, the Word of God Sunday, the celebration of sacred scripture given to us as God's living Word. We come to hear that Word and then to experience the Word made flesh in this Eucharist, to prepare our hearts that is first called to mind our sin and ask the Lord for his mercy. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
and let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good precept, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children, children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands high, raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, his excellency, and Ezra, the prescribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep. For all the people were, were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared, for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be sad in this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Find favor before you, Lord. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It does not for this reason belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor again the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary, and those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we surround with greater honor. And our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety, whereas our more pre presentable parts do not need this. But God has so constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now you are Christ's body and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret the word of the Lord? The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided after investigating everything accurately anew to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. 
Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing the Gospel of the Lord. Lord Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 39. For I am certain that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature can separate us from the love of Christ, the love of God which comes to us in Christ. That passage was given to me many years ago as a college student when I was in the midst of a crisis of faith and the campus chaplain told me to go back and look that passage up, and I did. And to this day, that passage is a very special one to me. Nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. John 21, 15 to 19. After they had eaten the meal, Jesus looked at Peter and said, Simon Peter, do you love me more than these? Simon replied, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, then tend my lambs. Three times Jesus says that in that passage. And I remember hearing that passage studying as a seminarian in the Holy Land. We were at the shores of the Sea of Galilee one morning and we had gone down to the very shore there where Jesus would often gather with his followers, with his apostles. And we just sat on rocks scattered around there. And one of my classmates stood up and read that passage. I realized that tears were coming down from my eyes as the Lord was looking into each of us who were preparing to be ordained priests and said the same thing. Do you love me? Do you love me more than these? And will you feed my sheep? A very special passage in my life. And when I hear that, those memories and images flood back. And of course, Matthew 26, 26. Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body. As many times as I have said those words at altars here and throughout the world, my heart still quickens and I stand there in awe of what is happening. These are a sample of scripture passages that have touched my life and impacted my life most profoundly. What are those passages in your own life? What scripture has touched you, has moved you, has helped you, has guided you, has called you to a decision in your own life? What are those words? Because this weekend we celebrate the power of God's word. In the beautiful first reading from the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah is the governor, and they have returned back from exile 
And he's rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem, and they're celebrating that in the passage we hear today. And Ezra, the priest, unrolls the scroll of the Torah, the law of God, and begins to read it. And they're back home. And they hear God speaking to them again of how to be a community. And they begin to weep. And Ezra says, don't weep, rejoice. God's word has reached you again. A people who had put God's word aside and, and ended up in exile has now come home and allowing God's word to reach into their lives to make them new. And we come to the gospel, the beginning of Jesus' ministry in the gospel of Luke. He enters into his hometown synagogue Everybody knew him. And he unrolls the scroll to Isaiah 61 and speaks these words. The Spirit of the Lord has anointed me to bring sight to the blind, to bring liberty to captives, to announce a year of favor from the Lord. And everyone knew those words. And yet that day something different had happened because he rolled up the scroll and then said, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. We'll hear the response. I won't give it out. I won't be the, uh, the spoiler for next week's gospel of how they respond to it. But can you imagine? It was the hope of the people of Israel that one day all of that would take place that the Messiah would come and would bring all of that to them once again. And Jesus rolls up the scroll and simply says, Today, in your hearing, these words are fulfilled. God's word are not just printed on pages. God's word carved into our very lives. It was God's word that gave us our breath. It was God's word that created everything. It was God's word that sent prophets into the midst of God's people to say, this is how you can live your life. It is God's word, Jesus Christ, who is in flesh, who comes into the world and says, this is how you can live and die and rise again. Do you allow these words to enter into the deepest part of our very life, of our very being? Or are they just words that join all the other words that come to us each and every day? Do we pray with Scripture? Do we study Scripture? Do we allow the words of God which are living? As soon as we hear them, they are alive and made present to us. Shall we let those words come to us in a way that they must to guide us on the path that brings us here, that guides us to this altar where God's word changes bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ? For God's word can do that. God's word can be fulfilled in our hearing. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, was confirmed to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered as God's people, we now bring our prayers to the Lord. For the church, may we promote reading and reflection upon the word of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christian unity, as Jesus prayed, may all be one, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of human life from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, may they experience Christ's healing grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased loved ones, especially Keith Fry, may they rejoice in God's loving embrace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your daughters and sons whom you gather once again, that your word might bring us to life. And so we come to you with these prayers and those which go unspoken in our hearts with the faith and hope you'll hear and answer us through Christ our Lord. Please join in singing number 633 for the beauty of the earth, number 633. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, in, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just, our duty and our salvation to always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Was I? 
are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you with the same spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Sebastian, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. singing number 930 taste and see number 930 
and let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you please be seated for just a moment. I'd like to invite Bob Stander forward. He's a member of our parish pastoral council. As you've been reading in the bulletin and probably in uh, Catholic journals and in the national newspapers, the Holy Father has called for a worldwide consultation of every, uh, of every Catholic in the world. And so it's an opportunity for us to gather and to have some time to talk about the issues that concern us as a parish life and community that will be forwarded to the bishops and then the bishops will forward it to the Vatican. So uh, this time right now is a time to have that opportunity to gather and do that. And we will be doing that next month as a parish here. And Bob's got some information about that. Thank you, Monsignor. As Monsignor mentioned, St. Sebastian, along with all other parishes around the world, have been invited by the bishops and the Pope to listening sessions prior to the bishops' synod assembly in the fall of next year. This synod process is about gathering the hopes and concerns of the people of God for the bishops and for the Pope. Synods have occurred every two to three years since the mid-1960s, but this one is unique. The Pope has requested all parishioners be given the opportunity to provide prayerful input on four fundamental core questions. It's a rare chance for parishioners to give anonymous input that will be sent to our bishop and ultimately to the Pope. The listening session at St. Sebastian will be Wednesday, February 9th, starting at hospita or with hospitality at 6.45 p.m. and it will end promptly at 9 p.m. All who attend the meeting will get a participant's guide like this in advance and it will explain more about the synod process and the four core questions. If you're interested but not able to attend, perhaps you could discuss the questions with uh, your family members at home and send one of the other members of the family to the meeting in your place. We are taking the proper COVID precautions so everyone will feel comfortable getting together in the hall. Again, the meeting is February 9, so you can sign up beginning today after Mass in the Narthex, or you could call Sue at the office, or starting Monday, if you go to the parish website, there'll be a link called Synod Listening Session. Just click on that and you'll be able to sign up. So please check your calendars and sign up for the meeting. Here are the top five reasons you should attend. Uh, number five, it's one night only. And number four, free parking. <laughs> number three, complimentary snacks and beverages. Number two, premium table seating for everyone. And the number one reason you should attend our listening session on February 9, Monsignor promises he will like you and will smile at you from time to time. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know whether to thank him or not, but uh, I don't know if I'll smile at him either, but uh, it's really an important opportunity for us to gather. We did that parish survey of our, our parish life about five years ago, but this is an opportunity to look at the broader scope of our life in the life of the Catholic Church. So a wonderful opportunity. I hope you can check your calendars and sign up and join us that evening. Only other announcement, as we talked about studying God's word, the Bible, uh, Jeff Cabin's The Bible Adventure Timeline uh, begins February 3rd again, a wonderful way to look at sacred scripture. And that will be Thursday morning or Thursday evening, 10 a.m. or 7 p.m. Uh, you do not have to have attended the first semester. You can just come and sign up. Mona's in the back if you have any questions about uh, preparations for that. But that will begin on February 3rd. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 582, Rain Down, number 582.